Welcome to Hebrew Hits Podcast. I'm so excited that you're tuning into the show again today. Today, I have someone really special on the show. She not only created her own company, which is Office Girls, which I'll let her tell you all about, but she is someone who is so special. She's a giver. And I don't want to get into too much detail right now. I want her to share her story and all about what she does. So here is Davi Mandel. Welcome to the show. Good to have you here. So nice to finally meet you. Oh my gosh. Literally in person. <laughs> finally, we're here together finally. in person. Finally, we had so many phone calls and Zoom. Oh my gosh. Really, really so many. You're listening to Hebrew Hits. I'm your host, Malia, and I'm so excited that you're tuning in to this show because that means that you want to succeed in life and you do not want to fail. Many of us go through such difficult challenges in life, and it's up to us not to fall victim to them. It's up to us to rise above it and to succeed. I sit down with people who have gone through real big struggles and show that they overcame them and are super successful today. It's what you do with what you have that makes a difference. Hebrew Hits is presented by TMC. So I know that usually when we have a podcast, we talk about, tell me about your background, but you're a little different. And in a sense that like, you really are self-made in so many ways. I want to know really what gets you up in the morning. Um, I know this sounds totally cheesy, but I love my life. I, I love everything that I have created for my life and what Hashem has given me. And I'm very, very grateful. Um, we made Aliyah to Israel a year and a half ago. And it's still new to me. So I love to get out every morning and exercise just so that I can breathe the air and feel the atmosphere and just be part of it. I love my city. Um, And then I love my work. So I need that exercise to, you know, get me going for the day. But I love what I do. And I, I just think about my clients every day. What can I do to help them? You know, what are they missing? What role I play in their businesses? That is amazing. I love that. So first of all, I love that you said exercise. So many people don't even like mention exercise. Um, they just think that they can do it all and people just sit and just work all day. And I love the fact that you exercise. Have you been exercising your whole life? Um, I'll tell you the truth. In Since the beginning of COVID until now, I lost 85 pounds. Whoa. And exercise has been a very, very vital part of that. And Uh I love to exercise now. Once upon a time, I hated it and avoided it at all costs. But now I love it. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. That's amazing. So would you say that is one of your biggest accomplishments? And if it isn't, what is your biggest accomplishment? Um, That's definitely up there. Okay. uh, My biggest accomplishments. Um. Like most women, I've lost and gained hundreds of pounds, <laughs> but I, I do believe that this is it, hopefully. Um, my biggest accomplishment, something that I don't always talk about, but people who know me think is something very amazing, more than I do, is that I donated a kidney six Whoa. years ago. Uh, through Renewal, it's an amazing, amazing organization. And um, my son-in-law also donated a kidney, so it's it kind of became a family thing. Um, what made you want to donate a kidney? Uh, you know what? I just felt like there's not... Hashem didn't make us with an overabundance of body parts that we can help somebody else with. And this is something that you could do. Yeah. And it's okay. You know, it's it's pretty safe. And um, I, I don't know. I just felt like, let me do something amazing while I'm in this world. And wow. so that's just it did is you, an amazing thing. Did you donate your kidney before your son-in-law donated? No, after. I was very inspired by him. Mm-hmm. And I, I said, I got to do this also. This is That's just incredible. Too <laughs> so have you met your donor? Has your son-in-law met his donor? So unfortunately, my donor passed away. Uh, she got an infection. She wasn't able to fight off. Um, but my son-in-law did meet his donor. And they they uh, became a little bit part of their family. So that's nice. That's incredible. Well, I'm saying the donor is alive now because of his kidney. It's like he took a piece of his body. You took a piece exactly. of your body. And you gave it to a person. I don't know so many people that actually do that. I actually know someone personal who has donated their kidney. And I find it incredible. Like, you literally got cut open and you donated 
a part of yourself. That's what I'm saying. You're a giver. That's why when I brought you on the show, I was like, <laughs> you're literally a giver because, you know, sometimes people may think like, what if I need that second kidney? But you're like, someone needs it. Let me give it. Yeah. Yeah. I, so I, I do tend to sometimes dive into things without worrying too much about all the consequences surrounding mm -hmm. it. So that may have been a little bit of that. <laughs> but I think you kind of have to be that way in order to do something that big. No, it, it, it's literally, literally huge. And um, I wish I brought Renewal on here as well to talk about kidney do donations. With you, you should. Because it's, it's really cool. No, I'm saying with you, you're a kidney oh. donor. It's, it's incredible. And it's so sad that like your recipient passed away. But you still did that. You still gave her life and and hope to live and that's like the biggest thing that you can yeah. give someone is hope thank god i'm very grateful that i was able to do it that i was healthy enough to do it yeah when because did you, do you it? have to go through a lot of testing yeah. six years ago six you years. have to go through a lot of testing and you have and i know people who wanted to give a, a kidney mm -hmm. with all their heart and they couldn't because yeah. they just whatever reason didn't pass the health huh. exam did you lose 85 pounds after donating a kidney yes so it's interesting because they say a lot of kidney donors are much healthier after giving a kidney than the average person that doesn't give a kidney because they tend to start working on themselves they're like we only have one kidney we need to drink more we need to work out more so i find it amazing that could that, be you know you take more care of yeah, yourself you more, because yeah, exactly. you're, you're more aware of needing yeah. to be healthy 100 yeah. percent and do you mind sharing how old you were when you donated the kidney? You don't have to if you're not comfortable. Um, if it was six years ago, I guess I was 52. Wow. Yeah. To but I've heard of older. I've heard of older people doing it. People in their 70s doing it. The the unfortunate thing about donating a kidney, and I didn't know this when I first started, was that a person who needs a kidney and mm -hmm. needs a donated kidney in order to function, the kidney only lasts 10 to 15 years. Really? So they actually would need another one at some point. Yeah. Wow, so that's kind of sad, that. you know, but that's just that's the life that it has. Wow. I did not know that. But you're saying if the kidney stayed in that original person's body, it would have lasted. It would last your lifetime. But for whatever reason, they have a limit. It has a limitation. Yeah. That is so scary, actually. Yeah. I'm like getting like, whoa, yeah. that's really scary. But when you read about what people who don't have functioning kidneys go through and what their life is like, it's just heartbreaking. It's mm -hmm. heartbreaking. Yeah. So it's like, how could I not help if I if I have the ability to you see so. and that's what you're all about you're like literally about like especially when I was on the phone with you and zoom calls I'm like you literally want to give to people and I am really curious because I want to know about your life like a little bit about your background what it was that you have this passion and this drive from what I've seen to never give up like you're literally so passionate about what you do and you're constantly like creating more you know I do. I do have a very big drive. Um, and I've where always, does that come from? I don't know. I, it, far, part of it is inborn. Okay. It's just my personality. Um, but also my parents are, uh, my mother is a survivor, not in the literal sense, like she went through a disease or anything, but she just, my father passed away and she just said, I've lived with, you know, one man for 50 years and I can't live by myself because that's just how she felt. And she's a Holocaust survivor? No, she's not like a literal survivor, but okay. she's she's a survivor in her own in her own life, meaning it was extremely hard on her to lose my father after 50 years of marriage, so she <laughs> she went and got remarried at the age of 72. She got wow. remarried. Wow, congratulations. And thank God she's still married and they're both happy and they're they're living their lives wow. and driving around in their golf cart, you know. Oh my gosh. I want I want before you actually answer the question, I want to point out something that you just said. You said the word survivor and she's a survivor of her own life. Do you feel that every single human being is a survivor of their own life? Yes, either you are a survivor or you choose not to survive and you give in. And, you know, I'm not blaming anybody or saying that everybody, you know, but I think that everybody can find the ability, the strength inside themselves to overcome whatever it is that yeah. they, you know, their hardships. And everybody's given their own hardships. It's their peckle to carry, as they say. And 
I think I believe that Hashem does give us the strength. I love what it. you're saying because that's what this whole entire show is all about. It's what you do with what you have that makes a difference. It's right here on the poster behind behind you. And this whole entire show is about I interview people and I hear different stories of people who went through challenges and struggles and overcame them and didn't fail. And there's two choices at the end of the day. You have a choice to not only just survive, but thrive and really overcome challenges, or you have the option to fall victim to your challenges. Right. And I love that you just said that, the survivor point. Um, how do you feel that you have been, like, have survived your life? Um, I People who know me know that I have gone through many big life changes over the years, and um even though I've gotten down sometimes and I've even had a little bit of depression from you know some of the changes, I, I always feel that it's my responsibility to pull myself out of that, wow. and I do. I do whatever it takes, whether it means getting a coach, you know, listening to a million YouTubes a day on positive thinking, whatever I need to pull myself out, I work very hard at that, and I, I just yeah. have this inner drive. It's very, very strong. I, I love what you're saying because some people don't have that. Honestly, people don't feel like they can just like get themselves out of it. But did you ever envision like the end of your life, like when you're really old and you're like, I want to succeed? Like, how does that, how does, how, 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 what does that vision look like to you? I don't know. I can't believe I'm almost 60. I tell my husband all the time, I said, I finally got where I wanted to be. And now, you know, maybe I have 40 years left. So like, I need a whole lifetime to accomplish all the things I want to accomplish. <laughs> But it's also good to be this age because I have a lot of wisdom behind me, a lot of experience behind me that I've, that I've garnered. So I, I don't know. I, I'm just I'm very happy and satisfied with the changes that I've made in my life, mm -hmm. even though some of them have been very pretty radical. Um, and it's working. It's working for me. So getting back to the, the word survivor, is there anything else that you want to add about that idea? Um, it's funny. Somebody told me like 15 years ago that I'm a survivor about me. And I was like, that's such a funny word to use. And I'm like, thank God I never had cancer. I didn't, you know, survive a, you know, something major. Mm -hmm. um, but, but. I've always kept it in my mind. It's, it kind of did fit in a certain way. And again, like you said, it's everybody survives some things in their life, yeah. even if it's just some things in their mind that they needed to overcome in order to get to the next level yeah. of their life. So we're all kind of survivors in a way. And I don't mean to over dramatize that word. You know, a lot of it's just inside yourself. Other people don't need to know what you, the demons that you're fighting every single day in order to come out ahead. But it's, it's, I like it in a way. I like feeling to myself that I am a survivor. I'm tough and mm -hmm. I'm resilient and I'm persistent and I don't give in easily at all. <laughs> it's, it's, it's amazing that you don't give in. I mean, like, some people just say yes to everything and just like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they're not really living their true selves. And then they're not happy with, with the decisions that they've made, you yeah. know, but you seem that you had an entire journey to get to where you are. Yes, and that's why I find much. it's so interesting. <laughs> and, and I agree with you that not everybody needs to know like what you're battling. But one thing that I, that I do want to add is that from speaking to so many people, I have noticed that every single person has something. Not one person is on this earth that has it easy. Right. And it's so interesting that the people that look like, wow, they have it so easy and life is perfect and life is great. It's not true. Right. Everyone's battling something. Right. So I do, I do appreciate you bringing up that point. Right. And that's part of the <clears throat> experience and wisdom that you gain as you get older and yeah. meet more people and go through more experiences. So you went through your experiences and you're so happy where you are today. You have a company called Office Girls, which I love that name. It's Office Girls with a Z. Um, you've also created a catering company. You've been an event planner. Um, which company have you liked the best and why? So I actually loved the event planning Okay. The most. Oh wow. Um, because I do have a creative side to me, and I was we I was partnered with my daughter. My daughter is extremely creative, and she 
her job was to work with our florist to come up with designs Mm -hmm. and we made I mean I could show you pictures some of those parties were a dream just so beautiful and um so I would I was really their worker. I would come and just put to help them put together the dream when it came time to set up. But I it's such an extremely satisfying feeling to just create something so yeah. beautiful out of nothing. So I loved it, but the truth is that my role in the company was mainly admin. So I did the invoicing, the bookkeeping, mm. the menus, you know, reaching out to the customers. So it was a natural shift. And it happened around the time of COVID and okay. also in anticipation of our making Aliyah so that I would have work in Israel to do um, for me to shift to remote admin work. So, so uh, by the way, I, I want to pres- before I even respond to that, I just want to explain to the audience how you ended up here because it's legit Hashkacha Pratis. <laughs> so I was on um, we were, we're both on LinkedIn and I created a chat on WhatsApp called the Women of LinkedIn chat and or women on linkedin chat and davi posted something looking for marketing anyways we got in touch and we started schmoozing and talking and she's like oh i love this podcast idea and so we're like okay let's do a podcast together the one thing i didn't know is that davi was actually coming to america now she lives in israel she made aliyah she was coming to america this week and it's like hashem just made it be that you posted on the LinkedIn chat that exact time and I had the studio everything ready fell right and everything place. fell into place and you're like, <clears throat> I'm coming to America. I'm like, we are sitting down to a podcast right now. Like this is what is happening. We're doing it in person. Why would we do, do it over Zoom? And it's just mind boggling to me. I was thinking about this this morning. I'm like, if you would have reached out in a month, you would have been like, oh my gosh, we could have done it in just person. I was just there. But like Hashem literally <laughs> exactly. orchestrated it in such a beautiful way. You know, you know, and this is what I love about um, networking Mm -hmm. and and people helping each other online. Yeah. So I belong to a number of women's entrepreneurial groups. And just the other day, somebody reached out to me from the group and she asked me a a couple of, Mm -hmm. you know, some advice about uh, an event that she's doing. And I said, you know what, send me over your flyer. Let me just take a look at it. Maybe I can help you with it. She sent it over and it was a little blah. Okay. (laughs) And I said, if you don't mind, I'll just try, you know, redoing it. And I completely revamped it, a totally new design. And I sent it to her. And she's like, this is amazing. How much do you want for it? And I said, no, this is networking. This is helping each other grow. Take it, use it, enjoy it. And, you know, and I love that because we all do that. That's the right way. That's the right way in business. I am connected to so many other virtual assistant companies. I don't look at them as my competition. We help each other. I love that. You're, you're, you're so amazing. And so, so tell me about, because you're talking about virtual assistant companies, tell me about your company, Office Girls. Okay. So Office Girls um, is a back office admin support. So basically, we can, we can be your secretary remotely. Okay. Um, we don't actually do real-time phone answering, so we don't do customer service, which is very easy to get somebody in the Philippines or in India to answer your phones. Right. Um, but we, we do emailing, we do invoicing, we do, you know, any kind of thing. We have, I have many clients, and they're in all types of different industries, okay. so they all need something else. Um, we've learned to use many software programs that our clients need us to use, and we just take care, we just take all those to-do tasks off of the owner's plate, because most nice. of our businesses are one to three people, you know, an owner and maybe one or two uh, employees. So we take that off their plate so they can just work on their business and work on growing their business. And I'm very proud to say, i has been two and a half years in, that all of my clients have grown, literally all of them. None of them have gone out of business. Wow. And I'm not attributing, attributing that completely to us, but yeah. I think we helped that yeah. process. And you said you've been in business for two and a half years. That means that you started right at the beginning of COVID. Did you, so this is interesting. Do you think that COVID really enabled you to start this business? It enabled the idea to come to the forefront. Uh So I was kind of doing it a little bit for a few friends here and there on the side at night. Um, But it enabled the idea to become a reality and some and you know, it's funny, because I still have people who don't 
understand what it is and and I have to kind of have a longer discussion with them to explain it because they're not getting the idea of having a secretary who doesn't actually work in your office. It's so interesting. But we can literally bookkeeping for them. Yes, we do bookkeeping also for American clients. We can literally do anything for you short of picking up your physical mail and shredding it because most of it's junk anyway right (laughs) but you like look through emails and all that we take care of your emails we 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 can pay your bills because everything's done online now right so there's very few things that we can't do from where we are so you're a full-on business that literally takes care of anything that a entrepreneur or creator let's say myself needs I have a podcast. I could work on creating, 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 and you take care of all the back end. Exactly. That's incredible. We can be uploading your podcast for you, writing the content and the hashtags and whatever you need. Oh, wow. That's so cool. Um, What is the name Office Girls? Now, are there only girls who work for you? There are only women at this time. Wow. And... um, uh, two of them are located in in Israel. Okay. One of them is in Baltimore. Okay. Um, I have only ever met one of them out of my three my three assistants in person. You only um, met one in person, yeah. And the other one, <laughs> but two live in Israel. Yeah, yeah. Um, so and we work American hours, so you know we're available up until five. So you're PM. basically like an owl. I'm an owl. Yeah. I became an owl, unfortunately, because I'm very much a morning person. <laughs> oh, But man. other than that, it all works very well. Wow. So tell me like about the differences, because I know that there's other different companies such as yourself. Doing what something is, yeah. similar. What is the difference between your company? I know that it's only girls, but... Yes. Or women. Women. But... Um, what is the the reason I say girls is because office girls, so it's right. a cool thing. That's okay. But um, what is the difference between your company and other companies? Such so as yours? I would say that the biggest difference is that we we have experienced more mature women, meaning we're not. No offense, we're not taking twenty year olds. We're taking women who have been, oh, excuse me <laughs> been out in the world. I'm a in my twenties, <laughs> and I'm probably more mature than a lot of forty year olds. That's true. <laughs> you are. Um, so you wouldn't take me as a client? <laughs> no, not as a client. I'm saying our, our workers. Well, I'm talking about hi- the actual you, assistants. You wouldn't hire me to work for you? I would want somebody more experienced, more years under the belt. What is, okay, hold on a second. Sorry. Hold on. <laughs> what does years have to do with um, experience? Because I so, run everything basically right. on my own. I mean, I hired a lady. It didn't really work out. But I run everything on my own, and I know how to do invoices. I I know how to do all the back end. I do publishing, everything myself, articles. I created my website myself. I don't know that many 40-year-olds that know how to do everything that I know how to do. So a lot of it really has to do with experience more than – when I say mature, I'm – I include you in that because it's not necessarily an age. Yeah. You're right. Most 58-year-olds like me don't know how to do what I do. Can't right, exactly. make their way through social media posting and all that kind mm-hmm. of thing. It's more of an exper- a maturity and experience in the specific um, areas that we work. Mm-hmm. And, and a willingness and a quickness to learn something new that you don't know. Okay. So that's very important. We're all native English speakers. To me, that's extremely important. Nothing against anybody who's not, but that's not what I'm looking for. I Uh need somebody who understands not only English and grammar and and spells well and writes well, but understands uh, the vernacular, the everyday speak that we have. And it's those slight differences for somebody who's not a native English speaker mm-hmm. that I'm not looking for. I right. want I want editing, I want proofreading, and I want as close to perfection as possible. Are you looking to hire people? I just took on a new a graphics person. Yay. Nice. Congratulations. <laughs> yes, so far so good. And uh, we will. We will look to hire yeah. people. And I will hire men as the well. Gra- I'm, so, I'm, but... I'm so interested in like hearing this thing with the age thing. This graphic person you took on is also in her 40s and 50s? I really don't know any ladies I like didn't in meet her in person. Age. Oh, you don't know. But I'm saying I don't know any ladies in that age group that are like so quick with technology. I would say she's in her 30s, probably. Okay. Um, what I was looking for specifically, and this is an interesting twist on yeah. what we're doing. So I was looking specifically not for somebody who has. Uh, official professional credentials as a graphic artist, mm-hmm. somebody who more uses Canva, 
which is a very user-friendly every man's graphics program, but has experience doing it, has been doing it for a number of years, has really up-leveled their own skills on mm-hmm. their own, has an eye for it. And when they send me samples, and I had a number of people apply for the job, when I send they send me samples, I know exactly what I'm looking to see. Yeah. And um, and I will train her more into my style or what I want her to do, but um, I didn't. So we're starting a new division of the company, okay. which is which is aimed specifically at shuls and other Jewish organizations who oh. don't have the budget or the need for a high end graphics company, huh. but need people who really are good at graphics. And the reason why it's good for us to be using Canva is that if they need to make an edit on their side when we're in the middle of the night in Israel, they can go in and do that edit too. That is genius. Because like when you think about a high end, graphic designers it could be that they're using canva we don't know what they're using don't you don't think it. so no more like photoshop they're using photoshop they're using photoshop yeah. and all that um but i love the canva idea because it gives you the much more flexible yeah for everybody it, exactly it, does that mean that like you charge less than, than so a we're going to be charging designer? more than we would for just the administrative mm-hmm. work but a lot less than, than a, a graphic professional des- graphic designer. Ah, that exactly. is very smart. So it's really for... It's a win-win. Yeah. And what? who are your target clients? So we already have five shul organizations on board um, that we do graphics for. We do newsletters. We do flyers. We do event you know, postings, evites, mm-hmm. all kinds of things for them that involve graphics. And we're looking for, we're looking to bring in more. That's awesome. So when you say the newsletter, how do they get the content for the newsletter? Well, everything's done through email. So they tell you, they send you the copy? So they'll or? send me the copy, the content usually. And we have content yeah. writers if they need that, but generally they, they know what they want. They send me everything. We lay it out. Ah. We have a template. We're just, you know, very cool. redoing it every week. That's very cool. And do you do anything for, let's say, since we're on a podcast, do you do anything for a podcaster? I did. Uh-huh. Um, he is put his podcast on hold right now. He's doing other other things. Um but we did do we didn't do graphics for him. We did more content writing. Okay. Yeah. Do you do you do anything with like turning a podcast, for instance, into like a blog? Because that would be very interesting for a lot of podcasters. So one of our our um, services that we have in the administrative area is transcription. Oh wow, that's really really tough. Which yes, people Whoa. think it's easy. I'll no. slap on a pair of headphones and and just type out what they're saying, but no, it's no. not that easy. Mm-mm. And you need some training. And so we do do transcription in English and. S- basic hebrew like wow sheer sure level hebrew. uh-huh that's 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 really cool because like people that don't know about that it's really tough like literally it could take you so long just to do a few it does uh, take, like a few minutes it like it's it's, it's real yeah it really really does so it's yes. amazing that you guys that you do it over there so what would you say is the biggest challenge you're facing right now in your business growth it's a beautiful challenge to have. We're yes. very grateful that that's, that's our challenge. Um, but I want to grow carefully mm-hmm. and not too big too fast so that we can continue giving our personal attention and yes. personal uh, touch to our clients and they don't feel like we've kind of disappeared on them running around looking for other clients. Um, and that I bring on the right assistance that will be able to handle Mm -hmm. their work. Um, And then, you know, make sure that the finances are all in place and everything works the right way. Um, I'm part of a group coaching program with Debbie Sasson. Okay, I know Debbie. Debbie Sasson's amazing. And her approach is unblocking money blocks in your mind. Helping you to, because we all have money blocks, all of us. Um, And just helping you to unblock that, rewire your thinking. Her program is actually called Wired for Wealth. Mm. And so rather than getting down to the nitty gritty of how to run your business, like most business coaches do, she's actually working in the back on your mind and your mindset to change how you think about money and helping you to attract more money into your life. And then I'm also working with... Do you see that that's been working? Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah? Oh my gosh. 
Wow. So much, so much. She has a fantastic program, Debbie Sasson. And then, uh, and I'm, then I'm working with the Jewish Entrepreneur Organization, who has so kindly um, provided me with mentorship in the specific areas that I need it. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's going well, too. They're amazing. They're amazing. Yes. Well, I was yes. part of the Jewish Entrepreneurs. Um, I was actually a mentor. And you're the one that told me about yes. it. Yes. Okay, fine. So we'll bring that up. <laughs> So another Hashkaka Prata story of our meeting, you see, this is the beauty of connecting to people, is that you reached out to me as we were speaking, and you're like, oh, I'm looking for a mentor. I'm like, did you hear of the Jewish entrepreneurs? <laughs> and then you're like, no, what is that? And so I gave you Robert Safran's email, and you emailed him, and look at that now. Within three days, I had already had my first appointment. It's amazing. My, my first Zoom, and my mentor gave me a couple of action items, which were fantastic, and you know, and then of course I stopped everything in its yeah. tracks and came to America for two weeks. But as soon as I get back, you but know, you'll continue we that when get you get right back. back on it. So, for a really fun question, what is one lesson that you have learned from doing your job that you think that everybody in the world should actually know? So, from my experience, and I have a big family, I have a lot of kids, mm-hmm. and most of my kids are entrepreneurs themselves and have their own businesses. And it's interesting to see the different personalities and who is a natural entrepreneur and does well naturally and who has to kind of like fight through their own blocks, okay. you know, to, to be able to work uh, for themselves. And what I would say is n- being a business owner is not for everyone. I wish it was. I don't think it is. I think okay. that some people take to it naturally. Some people have enough abilities and talents to learn to be a business owner. And some people should always work for other people. And that's not interesting. That's idea. not a bad thing. No, it's not. You need people that work for other people. But not everybody's cut out for it. And I've seen people try and try and struggle and struggle and just never make it as an entrepreneur when they would have been an amazing manager in a company or, you know, an amazing worker in a a company. So don't put yourself down if that's not your talent if yeah. that's not your but superpower. how do you know if it is like if you're working so hard because you believe so much in what you're creating how do you just know if you're supposed to do it or if you should get a job i i, I think there are aptitude tests that you can take that will help you to understand where your talents lie mm-hmm. one of the biggest things that Almost every business coach will tell you at the very beginning of business coaching, and I've had many over the years, is if you need to know, you need to assess yourself to know if, do you have patience, do you have persistence, and do you have the personality for it? And that's something that you definitely have because you're still doing business, you know. And you know what? I do have it, but also I learned that those are, those are important qualities. Can you say them again? Patience, persistence, and the right personality. So three Ps. Three Ps. And the persistence part of it and the patience part of it is don't think in terms of how much you're going to grow in the next few weeks or the next few months. Think in terms of years. Yes. What can I accomplish in a year? Yeah. What can I accomplish in five years? Yeah. And then you ha- you can calm down, have more patience for the for the process, let the process take its time that it needs and continually work towards it, but you must have goals, and you I, must write I down love, your goals. I love what you're saying. Um, you're, you are saying write down your goals, and I, fa- I just wanna say that I find it interesting because I've written down goals a year ago, and my goals have changed. Yes. And so like, I keep writing down new goals, and I have on my, I have on my, my bedroom wall where I sleep, your right? vision board? By my, I have not, not a vision board, I have these sticky notes okay. that are just Posted and they're just different things that I have to do that I want to do. I want to accomplish. Go to this amount of networking events a year. Read this amount of books this year. Um, connect with this amount of people. Like all these. That's goals. fantastic. Yeah, those all, are steps towards steps, the exactly. bigger goal. And then on the other side of my my bed is my goal, my future goals in ten years, in where I see myself in twenty years. And it's interesting that I do see that they that they switch, um, that they have switched over time. But one thing that you said is allow the process to, to like basically run its course. Um, a lot of people, I feel, even me, when I started out, I thought I was never going to be good enough until I, let's say, sold out Madison Square Garden or <laughs> I did something to that, to that level, right. you know, of amazingness. And I realized like, you're not going to get to that level of success unless you do this level of success. Right. So that's when I was like, okay, 
I'm going to do my episodes over Zoom. I went from conference call to Zoom. Now I'm doing in person and I see that you're that I'm building on the steps, right. which is an incredible. Right. So how in your business have you seen that you've built on these steps in the past two and a half years? Um, I'll be perfectly honest. I didn't expect, I didn't even want to necessarily build it into a large business at the beginning huh. until about six or eight months ago. I really? was happy having my one assistant and my bookkeeper. Okay. And something, I, I finally just said, I've got to make a decision. It's, it's push time now. I have to make a decision. I'm crossing over the line and doing what it takes to build or I'm going to stay small. Mm -hmm. And always worried that I don't have quite enough clients. If one drops out, what am I going to do? Um, that type of thing. Um, I had one client for over two years, and he got to the point where he felt he needed an in-house secretary. His business had grown okay. quite a bit, and that was fine. But when he dropped out, that's when I said, now it's time to decide. Am I staying small or am I growing? So when I signed up with Debbie... She really makes us write down those goals, write down your biggest goals, write down intermediate goals that will get you to the bigger goals. So we write down a crazy goal that like seems absolutely impossible. Yeah. And then we write smaller goals that seem more possible, even if they seem a little hard. And I just see it coming. And I literally have my goals written down on a piece of paper. And when I wake up in the morning, I do not get out of bed until I visualize every single one of those coming wow. true. Wow. Even the one that's in like 20 years? No, I'm not up the to The biggest that. goal? I'm just doing the one from a year from now. <laughs> oh, so you have, you're saying you have different ones. You have the big ones and then the right. intermediate the ones intermediate that will get ones. you. So right now I'm visualizing the one that's in a the year from now okay. that feels doable but still feels a little hard. Wow. But I don't get out of bed until I visualize it in my mind as a reality. You see, that's what gets you out of bed in the morning. You better believe it. Like <laughs> visualizing, that's what I started off, like what gets you out of bed in the morning and like really just like visualizing your success and visualizing what you can create gets you out of bed. Yes. Because you see it and you're like, wow, yes. I can be there. Let's get out of bed. Let's go let's work go and let's, happen. yes, let's go make it happen. I <laughs> exactly. love that. So you're, I, I know a lot of people maybe like um, misunderstand different things about what you do. What would you say um, is the biggest thing that people misunderstand about your field of work? Um, I, I think what I said before, just that they can't understand how you can have a secretary for your business mm -hmm. without ever really seeing that secretary. Right. So how does Many that work? Many of my clients I've never met in person. So, so walk me through that because I'm also curious. Like, how does that work? Well, basically, we, like, how do you know so much about the business? Like, that's so we what set, I'm curious about. So I about. have intake questions. Okay. So that I can start to get an idea. And we have an onboarding procedure where we get the passwords that we need from the client. We set up an, uh, an email with using their domain name for us. Mm -hmm. um, we set up WhatsApp groups, as many as we need between me, them, and the assistant that will be working with them. And most mostly we communicate with WhatsApp and or email. And um, we're just communicating pretty much daily. I have a drop down in my uh, Gmail of probably 15 different mm -hmm. Chrome pages, oh, wow. which are for each of my clients. I have very powerful equipment that can deal with having 10 Chrome pages open yeah. at a time and not slow down. And, um, but how just, does it work? Like what I'm curious about is like, let's say I would come to you and I would say, okay, I would like to hire you. Um, you know, I do podcasting what type of packages do you offer? Like that's what so, I'm trying to understand. Okay, so we offer, I do do some hourly work, but that's the most expensive way to go. Uh -huh. Packages are, are less expensive. And I have, I think, five or six different ones. I think I have five. Um, and it's for anywhere from up to 10 hours a month of work to up to 50 hours a month of work. And of okay. course, you can always take more. Um so we and, and if somebody comes in and says, well, I don't know, I have no idea how many hours I'm going to need. So we we talk about what types of things you're going to need. And we just grab one of the packages and we say, let's start with this. Mm -hmm. And we do that for three months. We at, we always t track our time and then we av we average it out and we see, are we going over? Are we way under? Do we need to go down a mm -hmm. step or up a step? Right. And I hear that. And do 
do your assistants ever speak with the clients of the person that hired you? Yes. Oh, the, the clients, their clients? Like, like, let's say I hired you. Yeah. And I have a client. Mm-hmm. Do your assistants or you speak to my clients? If needed. If you need us to. Like, if you want us to set up an appointment. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Like, setting thing. things up. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's so interesting. For so you sure. literally run the whole thing as yes. if it's like an, its own department in the business. Right. But you never met. Right. That's so interesting. Right. Sometimes when I come into the States, some of my clients want to meet me. Yeah, I would assume that they would. You know, Are you meeting anyone? Uh, I did meet with one. Yeah? yeah. Yeah. Yesterday. That's amazing. But generally, you know, this is the new world that we live in yeah. and Zoom is enough yeah. to kind of really get to know people. So do you absolutely love what you do? I love what I do. Yeah. I love it because I'm so proud of my clients. I, I Like I said, mm-hmm. they're growing their businesses. Not one of them has dropped out because their business failed. Okay. And I'm just so proud of them when I... And I work in their bank accounts. You know, their stuff is open season for me, (laughs) sort of. Um, And I am 100% confidential. But when I see their bank accounts growing, I am proud of them. Of course you should be. That's amazing. (laughs) Of course you should be. Like, that's like, you're literally helping them. Like, you're the whole back end of at like their entire business right you know right that's incredible and i'll check all of their their stuff every day and if i see something going on that doesn't look right or a, a bill that's due that they might not have noticed hey here's this bill you want me to pay it you know i'm just just taking care of that nitty gritty yeah. that gets lost because you're just trying yeah. to build a business and it's so interesting because you get to be involved in so many different kinds of businesses and like see what different businesses are doing and, and like it's always interesting it's so interesting <laughs> I don't know if you want to share this, but what is like the craziest business you've ever like worked with? with? Yeah. Like what type? You don't have to say the name, but like what type of business? The craziest. Um, I, I, I don't have the craziest. I think they're all um, interesting, but I'll tell you the most one of the most interesting ones okay. is actually a kosher foods um, meal kit delivery service. Really? Yeah. So he and I think he's really the only one, maybe the only one anywhere, maybe the only one in the Northeast. But basically what he does is he puts out a new menu every week of about seven or eight um, meals. Okay, You choose what you want and how many servings you want of each. He prepares everything. You don't have to take out a knife or open a cupboard or refrigerator. He prepares everything for you so it's ready to cook. Everything's chopped, Whoa. everything's sliced. He gives you the recipe and all you do is 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 make it. That is so in- and he's in America? He's in he's in Muncie. Wow, that is incredible. He delivers all over Rockland County. It's called Kosher Made Simple. I'll give him a little plug, Kosher Made Simple. And he's got a website called Kosher Made Simple. What? It's amazing. And it's not expensive. It's way wow. less expensive than going out to a restaurant. Just a little bit more than it would cost you to go buy all the ingredients yeah. yourself. It's such a time saver. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Wow. That's <laughs> the only thing I, I do have with those companies is like, I like to eat. So like their portions are not going to be big enough for me. <laughs> That's the only problem I have. I, I see these little por- two portions like hello fresh. One. I'm like, that is a tiny portion. Like how in the world am I going to be able to like, so I don't on find that? that his portions are so small, but, um, but there are some times where people will say, you know, I need extra sauce or we mm-hmm. want extra cheese or yeah. whatever. And that's fine. Oh, and you deal with that. We, we process the orders. My assistant and I process Very all the orders. Very cool. And from Israel. From Israel. This is, this is, this and we is make the all the labels. We make all the labels that he puts on his food. So how do we do that? We p- create the label uh-huh. with his logo, with the hashgah on it, everything. We put it in a Google Drive account. He pulls it out of there, prints it, and he's good to go. That's incredible. Yeah. Honestly, it's like they just have a service <laughs> just sending anything that they need. I love that. <laughs> now I'm going to ask you an interesting question. Um, it's totally out of the blue. I just feel like you could handle it. So what would you say is the bravest thing that you've ever done in your life? Well, it would have been donating a kidney. Okay. And it could have been getting divorced and remarried. Okay. After 35 years of marriage. Wow. But I'd have to say it's uprooting my entire life and going to Israel. Okay, so explain. In, the, in my mid-50s, because that was never something I planned to do, thought about doing, or wanted to do. Uh-huh. I did not grow up in a Zionistic family or community, and it was not on my list. 
I wasn't even that interested in visiting, although I, I did visit. Um, and my new husband just, he always had that desire to go, a very, very strong desire. He was actually born in Israel okay. and moved away when he was three. And his father always wanted to come back to Israel. And at some point during COVID, he came to me and he said, every night I'm dreaming my, about my father. My father's coming to me and I feel like he's telling me it's time to go. Whoa. And he said, I don't want to go there in a box. You're literally giving me the chills. His father went went back in a box. And oh my gosh. he said, I've got to go. I hope you're coming, but I've got to go. And I'm like, I'm his, old. His father that already passed away came to him in dreams. Yes. And I'm old fashioned in that way. Whoa. I know people who have done the, the marriage thing on two continents and I wasn't going to do that. I have never heard that before. I know people who have done it. I never I heard that. And I just said, okay, I'm going, but I am not happy about this. And it took me a six to eight months before I was ready to say, okay, I, I, I'm excited about going. And truthfully, I knew so little about Israel that I thought I'm going back in time 200 years. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to live in some yeah. stone hut. Exactly. <laughs> With no heat. It was your first time in Israel? It was my second, but the other time was 20 years before uh, for my son's wedding. Okay. And um, and I, I, so what I say is, what I tell everybody is, have no expectations and everything's going to be fantastic. And that's what happened. I expected them to be rude Israeli. Yes. I expected all the red tape at the government offices. I expected to never have a car because we wouldn't have enough money for one. I expected to live in an old, leaky, drafty apartment. The opposite is what happened. Wow. I lived in a beautiful, brand new apartment. Everything's nice. We have even have a car. And does it feel like America, like your apartment at all? It doesn't feel like America, but it's new and fresh yeah. and beautiful. And the people are lovely. And yes, they're sometimes rude, but we just laugh it off yeah. because we just say that's welcome to Israel. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and and we're just loving everything. And it's mo mainly because we kept our expectations so low that everything good that happened was fantastic. <laughs> yes, I, I happen to. I mean, it's a little bit like sad that you had to keep your expectations so, so, so low when you're moving to a whole new country. I know. <laughs> but at least you're happy now. I'm so happy. And like right now, would you say life. you're ready to move back to America or you're, you're happy no. in Israel? I come here and I'm freezing the entire time. I can't wait to go back home where it's warm. <laughs> and you school at home. I love that. It and is home. that's amazing. So <laughs> has, this is an interesting also question. Um, has your husband stopped having dreams about his father since moving to Israel? As far as I know, you know, he hasn't mentioned it. Wow. But we did go visit his father's grave, which turned out to be only a 30 minute drive from where we live. And he was very emotional and he was yeah. so, so grateful that wow. he could call Israel home. Whoa, that's so special. Do you live in Yerushalayim? No, Rehovah. Ah, cool. Oh my gosh. That's Yerushalayim's really... too cold for me. Yerush <laughs> Is it? Freezing. Oh, I don't know. I, I spent a year in Yerushalayim and I was like, everyone makes such a big deal that like Israel is so much warmer than America and, and New York. Like, and I was in not. Israel and I was, my bones were freezing. Like my bow, like everything was just so cold. It's freezing in Yerushalayim It's so cold and in it's the like winter. stone walls. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, really. No, no, Rechab, it's nice and warm. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well then you have vacation all year round. Exactly. You know? Um, okay, Davi, I have a little game. Okay. I know that I wear baseball caps a lot, so I have a baseball cap that I'm going to bring into the show. I have questions in here. All you got to do is just pick one out okay. and answer it. So uh -oh. here you go. I'm scared. Don't be scared. I think you're going to enjoy this. <laughs> Name five things that you are. Oh, grateful for. I thought that was it. Oh. <laughs> Name five things that you are grateful for. Oh, that's easy. Um, I am... Endlessly grateful that I have a beautiful family with many children, even more grandchildren, mm -hmm. and that they are all healthy, thank God, and they are doing well and really making the best of their lives. Um, I am just endlessly grateful for my husband, his love, his devotion, his caring, his support. He's beyond amazing. Aww. Um, I am. You're getting emotional saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's what to be emotional about. I am so grateful that we live in Eretz Yisrael and that it 
that it was an experiment that really went well, yeah. that was a success, and that we have so many friends, a beautiful, beautiful shul and community with tons of friends, and, and it's just a beautiful life there. That's three. I am so grateful that I get to wake up every day and help a bunch of small business owners yeah. do their very best with their businesses. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like a, a silent partner yeah. to help them. And I'm so grateful that that I have that opportunity to do that. And I am very grateful for my good health and my husband's good health and... I love That's that. It. <laughs> Those are so, so deep. Because like, I would think you would say you like that you could breathe and all these things, which are also very deep. But you literally went into detail. And I love that. And I saw that you got emotional <laughs> when you were saying those things. So like, I really appreciate you doing that. That was really fun. Thank you. And I hope you enjoyed that little game. I did. I did. Okay, awesome. That was great. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, so how can people find you and hire you so and everything we like that. are on facebook instagram and linkedin everything under office girls one word and girls is spelled with a z at the end instead of an s and we have a, a beautiful website officegirls.com oh simple as that officegirls.com very simple and if people want to reach out to you directly how can they reach out to you uh the best way is is message me on any of those platforms okay and linkedin yeah. is davi mendel yes yes okay Perfect. Yes. Well, thank you so much for being here. Is there anything else that you want to share that you didn't get to share yet? Uh, No, I just love what you do. Yeah. Love what you're creating. Happy to be a part of it. Thank (laughs) you. I'm so happy that you came on the show and I'm really happy that you came in person. Thank you for tuning in to Hebrew Hits Podcast. I'm your host, Malia. This is Davi Mendel. She is the owner of Office Girls. I'm so happy to have had her on the show. She's a kidney donor. She's a giver. She wakes up every morning and she envisions what she is going to be doing in the future in a year from now, in a few years from now, in 20 years, in 40 years. So thank you so much for being on the show again. You can tune in to Hebrew Hits at HebrewHitsRadio.com. We are available on YouTube at Hebrew Hits Radio. And you can message me on LinkedIn at Malia Feivelson if you have any questions. We'll be back next time, same time, same place.